Hello. Welcome again to Airships Conquer the Skies, the development stream. So, um, I was streaming development of this game a little while uh, before, but the problem happened that um, it got really hot. Um, we had a huge heat wave here in Zurich, and um, I tried to do more streaming, and I just stopped making sense midstream because it was like 36 degrees Celsius, and my brain was dribbling out of my ear. Now, um, it's actually September and the temperatures have dropped back to something normal, which means I'm going to try doing some more um, development streaming on Airships Conquered Skies. Mm. As before, please do forgive any rookie mistakes. Um, I'm still pretty new at the streaming thing and I probably just forgot everything that I learned. Um, but hey, let's get started. Right. Aha. Uh -huh. Here we are. Um, here's the development environment I'm working in. So what I'm working on at the moment, well, it's probably just easiest if I show you. I'm working on some uh, little helper overlays for ship design. So if we go into the game and open up like a good old HMS Belial, those of you who actually play the game uh, will be quite familiar with this design. There we go. And so what it's doing at the moment is that showing an overlay of how close each module is to um, the water. So there's a water tank here, there's a fire point here, and then it basically shows you how many seconds it would take for someone to walk with a pail of water over to, the, um, to a particular module. And so the idea of this is basically that you can see whether or not your ship design is well covered with fire points or not. Um, and you can see this one's okay, but critically like if something shoots this propeller, um, it might burn pretty badly before anyone can get there with some water. Oh, if we pick, or if we pick a design without any fire, uh, fire points, it just shows it all in black. It's like, okay, you don't have anything uh, useful there. Or if we, let's, let's see, um, like this massive design here has really good coverage because it's got, uh, what, five fire points all over the ship. So you can see everything is, um, is very easy to achieve. Uh, ah, yes, we have someone in the room, Matthew Gareth one. Yes, this is live. Um, do ask questions if you have any. Um, oh, hi, Cold Zero. Um, I'm highly pleased that people are joining me um, after I just vanished from streaming for like two months. <laughs> okay, so this is basically what I'm working on. Uh, yeah, if you zoom in a bit, you can again see the actual number of seconds it requires, so it can get to everywhere within like three or four seconds, which is pretty good. And so the idea is that I'm going to do a bunch of other um, overlays of the same sort of design. Um, to show different things. Um, then I'm going to make a little UI probably here in the top right to actually switch between these overlays. Okay. Okay, so we have we have a little to-do thing here. So we have water accessibility, the next one, oh, that's also ammo. Ammo is probably important, so it's so ammo next. So how long does it take for a unit of ammunition to get to a given weapon? Because, you know, ultimately, like a lot of Kind of games like this this is kind of a game about pathing and doing pathing well so i felt like yeah, i should just show players how good the pathing is with these overlays rather than making them guess okay so we have here water disc overlay uh basically oh awesome um cold zero is the first time you have to stream well thank you for joining us um if you hear any screaming in the background that's uh, the cats or my partner being like murdered by the cat, whichever one. Um, <laughs> okay, so we've got um, basically all the calculation for the sport edition and stuff is being done in this update function. And that just goes through each module in the ship and it goes through each source of water and it basically finds the shortest path and then stores that value in this um, map up here. So then um, 
we can derive the color of the overlay and the tooltip or really the text value that's displayed from that. And um, all, most of other overlays are going to do um, are going to be quite similar. So we're just going to do this bad thing, which you shouldn't do, which is copy paste a bunch of code and change it. Okay, so let's do ammo this overlay. So these weird little bits with the underscore T, the translation keys. Um, so all of the visible string, strings in the game um, get wrapped in this underscore T thing, which means that they can then uh, uh, display it in the correct language, um, English, French, or German at the moment. Okay. Yeah, case in point, that was the cat. <laughs> the swearing was me. <laughs> Yeah, the cats, the swearing, which you may have heard, was not the cats. They're a bit annoyingly clever, but not quite that clever. That was just my partner. Right, anyway. Ooh, okay. Cult Zero says a lot of the reason it came into view is because at some point in the future, you intend to make a game where your primary means of travel is a post apocalyptic wasteland flying around in the Zeppelin. I think that sounds an, like an excellent game, and I think you should do it. I think there is something a bit like this, actually. Um, I'm not sure if it's technically post-apocalyptic, but I feel like there's a kind of slightly Western-themed kind of airship RPG-type game, but, you know, whatever. There's a lot of uh, design space in here, so go wild. Okay, so here we're now we're only concerned with modules that actually require ammo. So I can just say if tm dot type dot this is slightly backwards, but the point is if the re reload value is zero, it can't reload, so it doesn't require ammo. Right. Um and then here, instead of get water, we really won't get ammo. That might actually be more or less it. Um, eh, yeah, let's see what happens. Ah, you intend to make it a voxel-based game. Cool, you know, um, oh, what's it called? Um, Sky Nations? Um, you may want to check out that one. That's kind of voxel-based airship construction. It's not very, it's pretty nice. It's not super flavorful, to be honest, but that might be uh, an inspiration for you. At, at some point, at some point there was um, like, with airships, I was like, hmm, you know, the code for flipping ships is really difficult to do. Um, it, wouldn't it, it would be kind of easy actually if this was all in 3D because instead of flipping you just have rotation and that's actually easier to handle in certain circumstances. They sort of hit myself in the head and was like, David, you're not rewriting the whole game in 3D. Um, so that's not happening. Okay. Um, yeah, and then here we have the actual overlay element which does the... Um, Oh, hello, cat. This this is Dexter. Um, he's one of our two cats. Uh, <laughs> Shall I lock them out on the balcony? Okay. I, I hope you all still have ears. try to destroy everything we love and hold dear. Um, I'm really sorry, guys. Um, uh, 
Um, okay, well, uh, on the plus side, the microphone's still working, so we can continue. Right, so yeah, this is the bit, this is the overlay um, component. Um, so, so like most, most of the display stuff in combat and so on is, uses a bunch of different types of layers, and one type is ship overlays. A ship overlays basically get called for each ship and can then choose to draw something within the coordinate space of the ship. In this case, of course, this particular editor overlay. We haven't done anything. <laughs> yeah, he is cute. It's just also annoying. Um, uh, yeah, so that's basically what it does. Uh, right now, I haven't put in anything about like turning this on or off, so it will actually display absolutely everywhere, which is daft. But we'll, you know, make a UI for actually enabling and disabling the different overlays in a little bit. And now I'm just going to change this to ammo disk overlay and run the game. Yes, yes, it's very bad. It's very bad. You're not getting enough attention. So you're just going to have to smash things, yeah? Right. Uh, is this better, like the cavalry? Is this mic audio now better? Bar one hopes. Okay, cool. Um, oh, um, I put the microphone. Um, I put the microphone down, rotated 180 degrees, and that's why it was bad. <laughs> so um, it was pointing straight away from me. Okay, anyway. So I switched, as you saw, I switched out the overlay for the ammo one, and we're just going to see if it does the right thing. No, 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 it really didn't. Okay, let's, let's be a bit more sensible there. And the reason, of course, it didn't work is that it assumes that there's a value for every one of those, but there isn't. There we go, that should help. Okay, um, yeah. Yeah, it's essentially correct. Um, I mean, it's not that much overlaying going on, but I think it's essentially right. Um, I guess the thing to do actually is to also highlight the, uh, is to also highlight the actual sources of the ammunition, yeah? Which are here. Okay, so in order to do that, we basically say um, if type dot get ammo is greater than zero. So if it's an ammo module, we say just put in a value of minus two. And we then say that, well, if the value is minus two, we just don't do the overlay at all. Let's see if the, um, oh, well, that's not just it being efficient because it didn't recalculate it. Okay, so now it will just, um, it will show the sources like that. It's not super pretty. But, um, yeah. Um, 
Now, I think there needs to be a convention for what color the source of a given thing is. <coughs> so I'm going to say by default that the convention is that the source is essentially lit up in white, maybe. Not far too bright. Like that. Yeah, probably even less. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. Now, the other thing which you need to do is that, of course, we don't want to say, uh, we don't want to have the number on here. One little change that I made recently to the way the game actually works is that now when you turn off um, the music, it doesn't actually load the music right at the start, which has been amazing for development speed because I'm no longer wasting so much time just letting the music load. Such things end up mattering. Okay, now the cat's like sitting in front of me behind the screen being very cute. Gets any close, it's gonna get a shove. Okay, so that's good for the amethyst overlay. Now I think for the water disk overlay, we now wanna have the same behavior. So basically, if a given tile is actually a source of water, Let's just go back over to the water distance overlay. Uh, what libraries do I use with Java? Uh, so libraries I use are mostly just uh, Slick2D, which is based on LWJGL. Um, so roughly the same set of technologies as Minecraft uses. Um, Slick2D is actually super outdated and I do not recommend you use it, but that's what made sense when I started developing it like uh, 20 months ago. Like a few months after that, Slick basically um, stopped being developed, but hey, I already started and it works pretty well. Big question is going to be um, what tech I'm going to use uh, for my next game. I'm heavily um, considering using Unity, mostly because everyone else uses Unity and so it's a lot easier to get support and to get collaborators and so on, whereas with Java you sort of, you know, you sort of have to figure out everything on your own and if something doesn't work you're kind of stuck. Like I have a bunch of ongoing email conversations with people whose computers somehow have a problem with my game and I'm still sort of working through why why that's the case. I mean in nearly all cases it works just fine and then like in one in a thousand cases it just mysteriously doesn't. Um, and you know that annoys me and um, if, it, if it was something like Unity, well maybe I'm kidding myself, maybe it would be just as high a failure rate but I would feel like you know someone else would have seen this problem before uh, because there's so many Unity games. Um, yeah, so I'll see. Um, I'll, at some point, so I'm, I'm going to do, since I'm kind of trying to start up this whole, um, this whole streaming thing again, I'm probably going to start doing the schedule, which you can see in my Twitch TV profile. Um, probably going to start on that schedule again. As you can see right now, I'm in one of the slots of that, and I hope to actually stick to those slots. 
And the, the Monday slot is a uh, one where I play games, a prototype, so other people's games and so on. And at some point, if you keep watching, I will also feature um, the prototype for the game that's going to come after Airships at some point in 2016. But for now, let's do water distance overlays. So that now uses the same um, coloration. Yes, yes. So we've got that. Now, what else did we want? We wanted coal and repair tools and sick pay. No, that's sort of pointless. Uh, but yeah. Coal and repair tools, which. Coal should be basically like ammo, and repair tools should be basically like water. Because again, um, of course, coal is only needed by certain modules, whereas repair tools is used by everything. So let's go into the ammo dist overlay. And um, oh yeah, the, oh the other question is kind of colouring these with a different gradient for each type of overlay just to make them easily distinguishable. So it would probably be a good idea to do this with the ammunition. Eh? So instead of blue, let's pick another color. That was again the cat. I'm, I'm very sorry, guys. Um, he's being really quite obnoxious. At least that time the loud sound was slightly further away. So, you know. No, actually, I think this is all right. Just doing blue to um, red. It's probably a reasonable way of doing this scheme. Let's just stick to that. Um, for all of these distance overlays. Okay. So... Right, let's take the ammo dist overlay and turn it into the coal dist overlay. Um, yeah, let me know if you have any questions or like follow up questions about like the game or the game's development and so on. I'll try to answer them in between incredibly loud cat sounds. Now we care about coal. So if the type has coal in it, then it's a source. This is actually really bad code, right? Like I you sort of neglected to put resource create storage and consumption in a kind of generic framework. And so now there's all of this duplicate code that basically does the same thing over and over again um, for all of these different resources, um, which is a bit daft. Um, but never mind. Yeah, it should technically do it. So let's just finish this off. Um, we've got the water distance, so we now need to repair distance overlays. Okay, so here what we care about is does it have repair tools? Okay. Oh, if you were watching um, the stream previously, um, back in like uh, August, um, when it was, um, if you remember, there was one stream which I couldn't publish um, because I'd put some background music in and it was like a public domain version of Swan Lake, which, um, which Twitch decided was not public domain. And so they blocked the 
the entire thing. And I still haven't heard back from them about that. So um, clearly their um, system for actually being told, actually, no, you were wrong about your blocking just is a black hole. Like you can do you can do appeals and then they take your appeal and they set it on fire and throw it into a bin somewhere, which is a bit frustrating, but never mind. Okay, editor. Yeah, so we can see again, that's for example, a pretty good distribution of repair base. Or if we have like something else. This thing, for example. Ah, now you see here, this is quite interesting because here we see an example of uh, a case where this overlay has actually told us something really useful, which is that even though we have a really massive machine shop here and a repair bay here, the tall top left of the ship is pretty hard to get to with repair tools. So, um, like the thing which you might want to do is zap out these three modules and put in a repair bay and then it crashes so you know that's pretty awesome um, <laughs> i mean to say and then it should hopefully work but never mind it crashed why why did it crash uh, Oh, because it's not guaranteed to call, update, and draw in the right order. Okay. Okay. So the issue was that, like, he was about to, like, recalculate things correctly, um, but it was too busy trying to draw things, so it crashed. Great stuff. But that's okay, we just need to guard against the map of values not yet containing... Um... Oh, yikes. Um, so Matthew Gareth 1, if you go on um, an image hosting site like the one that I'm just typing in, um, if you go on there, you can... Um, upload your file and then you can share it with us. Okay. So let's see if we can do this now. Oh, um, like, by the way, like, I'm not trying to be rude on, like, the chat thing. I'm just doing the talking and the chatting simultaneously. And it's obviously boring for you if you just watch me type on my iPad in the chat. So if I'm being short in the chat, that's just because I don't want to hold up the stream while I'm typing something out. Okay, editor. So we had, what was it, the HMS Fist of Doom. And you can see there in the top left... There's a distinct lack of repair tools. Now, hopefully, if I put in a repair bay here, it never updates. Awesome. <laughs> okay. Um, so, it, it's evidently not that good at noticing when it should update. Yeah. Okay. So, that's wrong. Let's look at the code. So it should technically call update constantly on this. And it should notice when something's changed. So it looks at whether there's a different number of modules. And if there is, it um, redoes all the calculations. Except for that's not actually doing that. Okay. Okay, 
So in HP, no, not this, but editor overlay, we update it with the ship and then we draw everything. So why then does to prepare this overlay? Well, update it. Well, okay, I mean, let's just sanity check things. Like when uh, we do debugging, the thing to do is to always just try and, you know, reduce the number of moving components. So I'm just getting rid of the whole clever logic that's meant to um, stop it from updating its calculations when nothing's actually changed. Um, because then we'll see, um, I mean, either, I, I imagine the logic for checking whether something's changed has failed, but let's just check that assumption before we start, you know, pausing off. Okay. Got a test case again. Yeah, you can see now, maybe if you look carefully, things are a little moving kind of a bit slowly. And that's because it has to do this whole recalculation every single frame. And uh, my fan is spinning up and everything. But lo and behold, okay, so that works. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Okay, I got it, I got it. Um, that wasn't very clever, that code, which I wrote, right. Um, so the reason this doesn't work, right, is that we're just comparing this, the ship with the ship. Um, whereas actually I created this variable here where we would store the number of modules we're expecting and we should be comparing against that. Because of course, you know, ship and this dot ship, like if we're just updating with the same ship, that's the same thing. Okay, so that line is wrong in every single overlay. I just hadn't noticed before. Ah, we have a land ship to sign. We have a look here. Boing. Okay. Looks reasonable. I mean, the, the thing with um, with these overlays I'm doing right now is actually that we're pretty much... Um, oh, yeah, so, so just to explain context, I uh, just got shown a land ship design um, by Matthew Gareth Wall. Um, your ship, your design has a lot of... Actually, yeah, let me just... Let me just um, let me just call this up, yeah. I think I copied that right. If it's something horrible, okay, it's good, it's good. I didn't make a typo. We didn't randomly load some like porn or something. Everything is fine, right. Okay, ah, it's got, it's got spider soldiers. Okay, so it's got a whole bunch of guns up front. That's good. Uh, it's got a big repair bay. Uh, it's got a lot of uh, soldiers for boarding, and it's got some sp it's got some legs, some spider legs, I think. Uh, yeah, I think that's actually a pretty good design. Um, I don't know if you need quite that many of those hatches. Uh, you could probably get rid of some of them, but hey, I mean, aesthetics count for something as well. Um, so yeah, I mean, if we took this design now and actually used these overlays on it, we could kind of see well. So, for example, the ammo stores are pretty good in terms of bringing stuff there. I think the major issues which I'm seeing from a pathing point of view, because that's what we're doing right now, is that the coal is in completely the wrong place, because it's all the way up there, and it should really be down there, um, somewhere near the, um, near the engines. And the other thing is that you only have one... Um, you only have one fire point right at the top. So if something like caught fire down there, it might take quite a long time to actually get the water down there. So that's that's probably the two things I'd change. I'd move uh I'd move the coal down and I'd add a second fire point 
somewhere further down. Um, but yeah, apart from that, looking at it just like that, not actually being able to see the stats, of course, I think that's a pretty solid design. Cool. Right. Um, so yeah, we were going through all of these overlays and fixing the logic about when they need to drop that. So now it should work correctly. So the other thing which I haven't actually looked at is the cold distance overlay. Well, it should work, one hopes. Oh, oh. Okay, this is this is wonderful. Like you can actually see that actually I messed up with this design horribly. Um, Cause see, um, it looks like the coal is pretty close to the um, to these engines and the um, targeting computer, but it actually isn't because oh god, there isn't any vertical um, connection in here at all, right? There isn't any way of getting from up here down there. You actually would have to wander over there, go down there. And then walk across, which is horribly slow, right? Um, like the difference in between these is like in an eleven second difference in how long it takes to get coal from to this propeller or that propeller. Now at least that the propellers, I mean, that just it's less bad than like if there had been a problem with the suspendium chambers, but it's still completely embarrassing. So like. Evidently, this is a pretty good feature because um, it's showing me horrible bugs in my own designs. Cool. Um, so that's actually um, all the overlays are done now. Um, I think the next thing I want to do is I just want to change the zoom level at which these numbers come in a little bit. So they'll come in a bit earlier. Um, which is here. Um, we're going to say, well, if it's like 1.2 or something. Okay. So the other thing which we now need to do is we just need to make a bit of UI that actually lets us choose which overlay we have, right? So first and foremost, by default, we have none whatsoever. Um, also, um, also, if we're not actually editing a ship. Um, then we shouldn't, you know, we should just go away and not even look at this whole editor overlay stuff. You don't want the editor overlay to like crop up and make combat for some reason. Okay, um, so now we need to write a bit of code, UI code, to actually be able to select these. Um, I guess the other thing that we need is. an actual list of those. Okay, so I guess let's make it water. Uh, ammunition cool there we go okay so we now need another bit of UI which is overlay choose of panel 
But now this one is not an overlay, it's a info panel. There we go. So an info panel is a kind of UI component essentially. So it's uh, drawn in screen space and it's uh, kind of on top of most other things. Okay, so what do we need? Well, okay, it doesn't have any tick functions. We can just ignore that. Uh, nothing changes over time. Um, and it also doesn't do text input, scroll input, or chat. It just pretty much draws a bunch of buttons. Okay, so... Um, So the first thing that we need actually is we need to get a hold of the um, editor overlay. That's what we started. So. Just copying the logic of when it should actually display, which is essentially only when it's um, when we're not hiding the user interface and when we're editing a ship. Okay, then we need to have one of those things for overlays. So this is a little helper function that just lets us pick, lets us specify some kind of. Um, type of ship overlay and basically it lets us say the uni screen, the kind of central screen system, I need to talk to another component, please find it for me. Um, which is kind of an approach which I totally stole from Unity. Okay. So we can just do final, uh, so we can now talk to the editor overlay from our overlay chooser panel. Awesome. Now we basically make a bunch of buttons. What should your eye call in it be? Well, that we can steal from the ship info panel. Okay, apparently that. Let's try that. And we're going to put it to the right, so the x coordinate is the screen width, minus, say, the 100 pixels. We might need minus um, 10. Okay, so now we make put a bunch of buttons. Actually, toggles.
Okay, so that gives us the option to like deselect the overlays. Now we need to go through all the overlays we actually have. Basically make a button for enabling those. Also make a tooltip. Okay, that should theoretically do it. So basically, this just rolls a whole bunch of buttons in the top right, with which lets you toggle in between the different overlays. Um, let's go into um, debug mode and see what it actually looks like in practice. Yeah, not bad. Um, looks bad right now because I haven't done any of the translation keys. Um, also, some of the offsets are clearly wrong. Okay. Um, I think the hit point overlay so it's a little bit of work. So let's just go in there and get rid of that HP prefix. I'm just gonna assume players will get what that number means. La la la, there we go. Much nicer. Um, and yeah, these buttons. These buttons, I think, will probably have to be quite a bit wider. So let's make them wider. And not glued right to the menu bar. Yeah, no, I think that's nice. Uh, I think that's quite decent. Yeah. Okay, so let's just uh, make some small improvements here. So the color scheme for the hit points is different to everything else, which looks really bad now. So we should fix that to have the same color scheme. Um, and I think the sources are still a bit hard to understand. So there, I think we, if we make this like green or something, I think that will work a lot better. Okay, so we were saying we would make it to the right. 
make it like green. Let's try that. Huh? Yeah, it's pretty good. Can we make it the same? 20 pounds as anything else? Yeah, okay, that's better. I think that's better. Maybe make the green a bit less bright. Yeah. Yeah, I think that makes sense. That kind of shows, okay, that's where the sources are. Okay, so let's copy that new color into everything. And then the hit point overlay. And the idea is that we now use the same color scheme as with everything else. Uh, which is a little bit difficult because with this, unlike everything else, big number good. Um, but I'm sure we'll add something. So this is the formula which we are using for displaying distance. Now we essentially want to adopt it to be like that. Yeah, scaling issues, right? Yeah, getting the was strong by the orders of magnitude. Okay, now that's too depressing. Oh, we're getting there. Yeah, that's good. So that essentially shows as well, okay, um, the bits outside um, are vulnerable compared to the bits not outside, which is sort of what we knew. Okay. Yeah, I think that's okay now. So you have no overlay, and then we can say, okay, which bits are like, you know, strong or not. So now ideally, if we added, say, a strut here, Yes, indeed. So now we've we've improved the hit points of that bit and we've basically prevented it from being massively unstable. So that's good. Do like the water distance, for example, you can see, okay, that's good. The repair distance, we can see we have this problem. So we would go and say snip out these three and replace them with a repair bay. That's also fixed. Ammo distance is generally very good. To find the cold distance, we made a stupid, stupid error, um, which needs fixing somehow in some ass backwards fashion. I'm going to fix it like this. It's not a good way of fixing it. But never mind. Well, there we go. So now we have put a vertical corridor at the back of our ship, um, which makes it less impossible to get the coal to where it needs to be. Uh, what's the importance of struts? Uh, struts have... Um, basically, struts are modules that do absolutely nothing apart from having hit points. 
so they're very cheap they you can't go through them um they don't have armor but they're also very light and you can basically use them to hold bits of your ships together and um, so the thing which you can see from this hit point calculation stuff is that the amount of hit points a module has partly depends on what it is but it also partly depends on how exposed it is so you can see like the modules which are kind of really sticking out like these turrets they're really fragile because they're not being you know secured by stuff around them um and so you can use struts to essentially add extra reinforcements to ships so if you get rid of these struts right you can see now the hit points of that poor um suspendium chain have just gone way down so um if i wanted to enforce that i can put some struts here and then uh, that means that it's like no longer possible that suspendium chamber to be like spontaneously exploded with very little effort. So that's essentially the idea. You can also change the global quantity of hit points by adding keels. So um, if we ignore the fact this will make it unflyable, we could add like a grand keel here at the back. Bonk. And now as you can see, everything just got a bit bluer. Um, because the keel there because the keel reinforces things and the funny thing it does it doesn't really do that much does a little bit yeah but the ground keel actually seems to decrease the hit points which is a little bit odd okay no okay so i think it's a distribution problem like it seems to be really increasing the hit points of small modules okay no that just didn't trigger properly last time god knows why get rid of keel add keel get rid of keel oh mm -hmm. No. Ah, it's complaining it's not properly connected. I think. There. Weird. Okay. Don't quite get it. Something to investigate. <laughs> Why do grand kills actually decrease hit points on alternate Tuesdays, right? Um... Unclear. Okay, that might need some work. Because it should add a huge amount of hit points to the ship, but it evidently doesn't. Uh, weirdly enough, the smaller keels do just fine. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I'll figure that out. Um, so not only is it, good, is it a good design tool, uh, yes, it also helps you find bugs in my game. Isn't that lovely? Yeah, I do think I may have just found bug, uh, Matthew. So, yeah. Oops. But hey, on the plus side, you know. Okay. So one thing we need to fix is that sometimes when I click these, I accidentally place modules now this is not so good and we should ideally fix this um but i'll have to think a bit about how to do that cleanly um for now um my other flatmate is actually just coming home so i think this might be a good point to uh yeah call it today uh we've definitely achieved something useful which is that we have these fancy new overlays that let us see bugs in our ship designs and in our games um apologies again for the attempt to destroy your ears with a cat um, but i hope you enjoyed the stream and i hope you'll tune in again soon as i said i'm gonna try and stick to that schedule which is posted on my twitch profile and uh, this video will also be online on YouTube in a little while um, for late lookings. 
So yeah, um, thank you for watching.